This episode is brought to you by Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, you should definitely check them out. It's a super easy tool that anyone can use to create and distribute their podcast. It has everything you need, and you can do it all from your computer or even your phone. Need your podcast cover art? There's a tool. Music and sound effects? They have you covered. Want to record on the fly? It's easy with the app. Now you may be saying to yourself, I already have a podcast. No worries. Just create your account, upload, and publish to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Looking for some walking around money? Anchor connects you with advertisers who match your brand. It's a one-stop shop for all of your podcasting needs. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You're listening to Biz Quick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. Biz Quick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real-world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the Biz Quick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to BizQuick. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And on today's show, we have Philip Sessions. He's a mindset and leadership coach for engineers. He has the podcast Healthy Living Sessions and he's out of Greenville, South Carolina. But before we bring Philip on the show, Corey and I are going to spend some time talking about mindset and leadership and maybe failed engineering schools. Well, Let's just start since you called me on that. Yes, I, uh, I, like, I took a semester of engineering and then realized that it was not for me and went into business. Yes, little known fact about me. I also did went to school for engineering. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. I did. Why do you not believe me? Because it requires math. Yep. And as soon as I figured that out, oh, guess what I did? Dropped out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> But yes, I did. I uh, when I was at Drexel, that was uh, the track that I was on was engineering, and then I thought, oh, this is hard. Let me go for something more liberal arts ish. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, we, um, engineering is no joke unless you're a civil engineer, in which it's kind of a joke. Right on. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. Now all the civil engineers have stopped listening to us. Yeah. I'm sorry, Stephanie Cook. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, mindset. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting topic. And I think that uh, it's something that is, it's different for everybody because we've spoken quite a bit about this and we've had plenty of people on who talk about mindset and there's those people who love the, the self-help books and the, 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 you know, oh, you can do it and motivation and all of that. And all you got to do is put your mind to it. And, for me, like I like that's just that's not my thing. Like I don't get anything out of that. Like I don't need anybody. Like I don't need a cheerleader, you know. And that's and and that's uh, I think something that's that, like people need to consider because you read something like all you have to do is just go outside and you're gonna feel better. It's like well, that's not for everybody. Like we're all different, you know. That's true. You know, when you were talking about I don't need a cheerleader, you know what I thought of? I thought of that time that we were out hiking with a friend in South Carolina, I think. And I just was having a miserable time. My nutrition wasn't right. I was tired. I might have been hungover. It was just not a good day. I was done. That hike took like, it was five or six miles longer than we thought it was going to be. I thought we were going for a nice little like four mile hike. And I think we went like closer to 12. It was stupid. And that last, I don't know, two hours, I was miserable miserable and our friend that was with us was trying was she's just a cheerleader by nature that's not a was that's not a insult it's just she's very positive upbeat and she was trying to cheer me through it and I just was not having it like I don't I don't need I don't respond well to cheerleading and like that positive chirping um unless I ask you for it like I don't I respond much better to like quit being a little bitch and go get this done. Right. That's, that works better for me, but I also can find motivation on my own where I need it. Right. If I need it, I'll go, I'll go watch a YouTube video or something or call my eight-year-old niece and let her tell me like, why do you think you can't do it? I, I it just, I don't need it from other people. 
Yeah, and it's it, it's that's a, a good point, especially when it comes to leadership, because you when you're coaching people, leading people, whatever it is, you need to know what people need to uh, to be successful. You need to know what tools they need, what help, what motivation they need, because the motivation could just be get this list done by the end of the day. And that's all the motivation they need. Some people need a pat on the back. Some people need you to come in and tell them how awesome they are, you know, every hour or whatever it is be like oh that's so great we all love you you know um but again you just need to know that about your people and you need to be able to uh to give to to give people what they need essentially whether that's room or words of encouragement right so is it then a and warning this is a trick question coming your way is it are you a bad leader if you can't give your people what they need um I mean, yes and no. Like, I think that uh, setting expectations up front, for instance, I, went, I said this a couple of times when I was in restaurants and it's true to this day, like it, for my employees, like, especially when it's really busy or whatever, like no news is good news. If I'm not, if I'm not saying something negative to you, that means you're doing a great job and that's the best you're going to get out of me. Yep, you went exactly where I wanted to yes. go. Did you know that's where I was going? Yeah, but I tell my employees that. I'm like, well, I'm not your employee. Yeah, I know, but I tell my coworkers, <laughs> my partners as well. I'll be like, look, you're not going to get that from me. So unless I'm criticizing you or saying something negative, you're doing a good job. So right. just go with it. So what's ironic is that um, you're you're correct. You do. You're very upfront about that. Like if it's no news is good news. Um, I I don't need the hey great job sometimes i need to hear it i don't need to hear it every day i don't need to hear it every hour but sometimes i need to know like hey like nice work on that right and um you don't ever need to hear it you don't in fact you get annoyed when you hear it and the irony is you give to me exactly what it is that you need which is nothing and i give to you what i need which is hey great work on this nice job and it's like each of us trying to like show the other person, like, this is how you're supposed to do it. And we just don't learn. I'm not not trying to show you. I I also say when I type a comment, looks good. That's a compliment. Run with it. (laughs) All right. Looks good. I I know. Sometimes I just need more than that. I don't know. Looks amazing, Julie. You're so (laughs) awesome. I can't believe that I'm so lucky to have you as my, no. (laughs) So, but exactly. Listen, now you... I'm going to tell a story on you, though. Can I tell a story? Sure. Yeah. So there was a there was a um, a point. I think it was probably like last summer, early last fall, where I was really struggling, right? And I just needed to feel appreciated. And I came over and uh, for a meeting, and there was a card on the table and a box. Oh, there was a box of bullets with a with a ribbon on them and a card that all it said was you're appreciated because I told you I need to feel appreciated sometimes and so you literally and and the bullets was not like a negative that was like let's go to the shooting range and here's some bullets to use with at, at the range and hey you're appreciated and that and I know it was more tongue in cheek than anything but you also knew I needed it and that probably like held me over for like eight weeks where I was like, yeah. And I still have that card let's and I still in, look at it all the time. Let's turn that into like eight more months. And <laughs> I'm good for 2021. <laughs> all right. Well, we are, uh, we got to bring in um, Philip here to start talking, get a, a professional opinion on mindset and leadership. <laughs> yes, let's do that. <laughs> and, all right, uh, let's take a quick break and we'll bring them in. We wanted to take a quick break to tell you about our newest course called Time Bomb. If you're ready to take control of your calendar, this course is for you. We guide you through all the steps you need to understand where you're spending your time, what your time is worth, and how to build out your days and weeks so that you can add more value to your business or just spend that time enjoying life. We have three options for you. The course, a bundle which includes products designed to help you become more efficient with your time, and a boot camp where you'll get time in a small group setting to get the personalized help you need. Head on over to sbpace.com to learn more. Time Bomb. Take control of your calendar. Gain control of your life. Welcome back to the show. We've got Philip Sessions with us now. Philip, again, is out of Greenville, South Carolina, and he is a mindset and leadership coach for engineers. 
and we are really looking forward to talk to talking to him. Hey, Philip. Hey, thanks for having me, Julie and Corey. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, we've got some topics today that we may cover with you, depending on where the conversation goes, that we've not really talked about with many other people, with many other guests on the show. So this should be interesting for our listeners. Before we dive into some of the questions, um, I can't help but think when I read that you are a mindset and leadership coach for engineers, that is really specific for a very specific group of people. So how did that happen? So I, I guess, let me give you a little backstory. I was doing personal training and then realized I talked a lot more about mindset development and leadership development. And so it turned into, well, why not do something actually helping people with their mindset development? And then I wanted to niche down a little bit and working with my coach right now, what our mutual friend, Corey Barrier, he was like, hey, you're an engineer. Why don't you coach engineers because there's a lot of them out there really smart and you see engineers not a lot but you do see engineers that go and create their own stuff but they don't know how to get that out to market i've seen a, plenty of smart engineers in my with in my career the the companies i've worked with as well as just seeing them on tv or social media and they don't know how to tell their story they have this amazing product but they don't know how to pitch it because they're very smart, very analytical, but they can't tell you, like, I guess, dumb it down for the common person, right? There, there's so many things going on behind it, the way they programmed it, how it's designed and everything, which is great. They know that side, but they don't know how to tell somebody who's not an engineer that side. And so me having that background, being an engineer, I felt like that was just the perfect route to go to help these people and then also do what I love to do is help build up people's mindset and get them to be able to communicate properly as well with the mindset. I had no idea that you were working with Corey Barrier. I had I, I really did not know that until you just said that. So that's awesome, Corey, the sales CEO. So mm -hmm. um, that's 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 a nice connection there. Um, how long have you been working with him? It's been, I think about a month and a half or two months. And we knew each other from Arte. And then really when Clubhouse started coming up, I was getting in his rooms and everything. And we just kind of talked and it's like, hey, this makes sense. Let's let's work on that because sales is something that I really need to work on. I've been really good at being able to have video presentation, do communication and build a personal brand around myself. But when it comes to actually asking for that sale, that's where I get hung up. And so I needed that help. And Corey was the man to go to. It's funny that you're, you're talking about these, uh, the, the engineers and people who have the, this amazing in intelligence and skill set and whatever, and they don't have the sales background. And then we've worked with dentists who are great at what they do, but they don't have a business background. And it seems like a mm -hmm. lot of people go to school and they don't get that kind of well-rounded education. And um, we, I was reading an article the other day and I can't remember the dude's name, but he's super smart. He's been on, like, he's featured on, uh, television. He's like a quantum physicist, whatever. And they're asking him why, uh, the, you know, they've had problems with, um, like getting funding or public support or whatever, for whatever, you know, the projects that he's doing. He's like, cause we talk like engineers. We, we mm -hmm. don't talk to the public. Like the, the public just frankly doesn't understand it. So it's too, it's too, it goes over their heads. And, and now like, we can't get funding because people are like, well, I don't get it. What are, what are we going to do this for? You know, why, why do I need to know, uh, you know, like why this collider is going to be helpful? And they're like, oh, well, we're going to talk about subatomic particles and whatever. And like at that point, 95% of your audience is out. Sure. You know? Right. Yeah. You're talking about subatomic particles. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to go think about this over here or move on. Like, yeah, <laughs> because I don't get it. It's way above my head. Yeah. We definitely have to bring that down so people can understand it. That's we are we're actively participating in the dumbing down of America though. So it's no doubt that <laughs> you know what I mean? And I get it, quantum physics is yeah. way above, but mm -hmm. yes. Um well and uh, yeah, and I just like before you go on to that, it's like it, I totally agree because there's just no effort on the public's no. side. You know, as soon as they, yeah. they, they they tune it out, they just turn on their their Facebook machine on their phone and go from there. But yeah, All right. I want to go back to something that you said earlier, Philip, when you were talking about um, working with Corey Barrier and your relationship there. And the, the, the thought that popped into my head is 
that when I think of you, I, you have such a strong brand. And I don't know if you realize that if, if you've been told that before, but when I am on Instagram, right, and I see your stuff come across, I, I never even have to look at the name in the upper um, left-hand corner of whatever the post is. I always know your posts, not just because usually your face is on them, but because they are always so strongly bent towards mindset, accountability, and leadership. And there's such a distinct style that comes with what you are talking about on that platform that it's a really strong brand that plays really well for what it is that you do. And I just, I didn't realize that you were a um, mindset and leadership coach until fairly recently. And mm -hmm. your, your brand is very well developed, very well developed. Well, I appreciate that. That, that means a lot. And that's kind of part of why I'm trying to get the coaching is because I've struggled to have that self-belief in myself. And so having Corey help bring that out has been a huge help. And so I appreciate you mentioning that my brand does show up that way. and is very strong. That, that means a lot. But that's that's part of why I have the coach because I need help with that self belief because that's a big part of sales is believing you can go and help somebody else, especially when it comes to coaching, or sure. that your product is the right product for people. You have to believe in that product for others. It's it's hard to make that sell when you don't have that belief, that true belief behind it. Does he ever call you by your name, or does he always call you dude? You call me what? Sorry, dude. <laughs> dude, no. Uh, <laughs> Go back and forth. Most time it's dude. <laughs> um, so when it comes to engineers, I, I think that most people, they kind of have a, a cliched image in their head, the stereotypical engineer. Pocket uh, protector. Yeah. No, I don't think anybody has that these days, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, introverted, probably not like social skills are, they're not high, you know, they don't rank high on the social skills and all of that. So I, I, one is that relatively true and two is that what you're trying to do is coach people out let's say out of their shells so to speak yeah that is so true i'll give a, a funny story so back in college i had a buddy it was, it was me and two uh, two buddies that did this project together the one guy the smart one <laughs> he did literally the whole project and then we got together probably a week before and kind of talked about it a few times it was like Hey, so here's how this circuit works. Basically, we made, we made an electronic stethoscope. And he tells us about how all of it works. And then he had already done the PowerPoint. It was like, here, you'll talk about this. And you'll talk about this. We get in there. And he is so nervous because he's such an introvert. He sounded like he didn't know what he was talking about. And he got the lowest grade when it came to the presentation portion. I mean, it was still a 90, so it wasn't like a terrible grade. But he got a 90. I got 100. And the other guy got 105. And it's because he was so nervous. And this is what happens with engineers that are introverts. There's people that are introverts in general because they sound nervous when they're going in for the sale. They're afraid to talk to that customer. They, they get real, real shy and getting really quiet. And, and it sounds like, well, maybe they don't believe their product works. Maybe they what they're saying, they really don't believe that or they're kind of just talking out their butt essentially there and that comes off as bad to the customer and the customer's not going to want to buy from them so that's part of what i do is help them get out of that shell and help them speak with confidence because they are smart their product does work properly but when you talk in a timid way people tend to think that you're you're probably lying or your product doesn't quite do what it really does or yeah or you don't believe in it yourself and why should yeah. they and that's such a that's why that authenticity is so important in sales right to mm -hmm. like it's okay to be an introvert and to be an engineer who is you know would much rather be in the back room designing building developing things versus you know in the front of the room trying to sell it and like just owning that and, and talking about like, okay, this is, I'm really admitting like you're uncomfortable is a huge, yeah. that's a huge way to get buy-in from other people. So I, I, I can see where, what you're doing is really needed with, with the engineering community. So that's, that's awesome. I love that you settled on that group and now I understand it so much better. 
Yeah. And I always, always feel like I kind of had that connection where I could connect the dots between even from engineer to engineer or engineer to business owner. Cause another story I can give you is we had engineers, both, uh, we had contractors and I was a contractor at the time. And then we had engineers at BMW and if we we're trying to talk back and forth and the contractors were like, Hey, we want to do it this way. And BMW is like, no, we have to do it this way. We can't do it that way. Well, neither one of them were understanding each other. Both of them very smart, both of them engineers, they all can program, but they couldn't understand, the contractors couldn't understand why they had to program it a certain way, and BMW couldn't understand how they couldn't understand that and couldn't tell them how to do it. And so I come between them, I'm like, hey, the contractors are saying they want to do this. BMW, is that what we can do? And then BMW is like, no. And then everybody understood after that. Everybody was on the same page. So being able to connect those dots is a, is a big thing that is a missing gap for a lot of engineers, Yeah, which goes back to kind of what we talked about earlier with dumbing things down, bringing it <laughs> down to more than that fifth grade level. So everybody can understand you know, some of that stuff can get very complex. Yeah. And that's, uh, so yeah, I guess back to that, it, it's, uh, um, the, again, I, I wish I knew the dude's name, but he, uh, but he was talking about, they were, they were going to build this super collider and it was in Texas and mm -hmm. some legislator in Texas, uh, asked, literally asked the question, will this help us find God? And the engineer didn't really know how to answer that and basically said no. And at that moment, like that, that legislator was just like, nope, I'm not voting for this. It's like, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah. So um, when it comes to mindset, though, how does how do you coach that? Because I know that that's something we were talking about prior to this, that it's it's uh, it might be different for everybody. Just a different approach, like how mm -hmm. people react to to that. Yeah. So I try to figure out kind of where they're at, where they're trying to go and then build up from that. So to me, to build up mindset is is more about confidence. That's the the biggest thing most people lack, I would say, especially in today's generation, the younger generation, they don't have that confidence, especially going out into entrepreneurship because, well, they've they've won all the time. They've always been a participant and gotten a trophy. <laughs> well, when you go into the business, when you go into entrepreneurship, guess what? You don't do it right. You don't get paid. People are going to ridicule you. They're going to ridicule you for just even trying to do something that's not the normal thing to do. And so teaching them confidence, how to build up that confidence. So finding small ways to win, small things to improve on and be able to say, yes, I did that. And just keeping with that consistency. And that's how you build up that stronger mindset. And to me, it comes down to three things, having fortitude, having ten integrity and having tenacity. So being able to stand up to adversity, no matter what, standing up for your goals and being right there on that path and undivided, going all in on that and just an all out pursuit at all times. That's what really makes up mindset. And so that's what I, I like to teach a lot and help these engineers figure out is what is their actual goal? Because whenever you can figure out your actual goal and get crystal clear on that, that's when you can build your mindset up for that. But if you're all over the place, everything's wavering and one minute you're, you're all about going in this direction. The next thing you're going 180 degrees the other way. How can you build up a strong mindset if you're constantly changing back and forth? So getting them to realize their actual goal and then setting that, firm in foundation and then sticking to those guns. Goals are hugely important. And um, you said a lot of really good things in there. Um, the, the, you know, trophy generation is it's, it's a, it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, it'll be interesting to see what happens to us as a country in the coming years, because in part, because of this trophy generation mentality and, nobody likes to lose and everybody is so afraid of failure. Like people just think failure is not something that you're ever supposed to experience when the reality is failure is, you know, you should be looking to fail and, and make mistakes mm -hmm. and learn from them. And just people aren't good at that anymore. They're really not. And yeah. And being on the engineering side, I see where so many jobs are, are coming to be taken away by robots where so many things are getting automated. It's, it's, 
unbelievable the technology that's out there and that's coming and we're doing a lot of that with with my full-time job currently with bmw and 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 other companies are working on this as well and just automating so many things we see the the registers at walmart we see the registers at mcdonald's all these places robots that are doing jobs that a human used to do it's coming and so if you're not taking that time to develop yourself to become better you're gonna get replaced by a robot so what are you doing to make that change I don't that participation you, trophy isn't going to help you out. No. And I don't know if you saw how much Corey's face lit up when you started talking about robots, but now he's <laughs> all in. Well, <laughs> yeah. And it, it, I mean, it is funny because everybody, uh, you know, they talk, uh, uh, the robots are coming and we're going to be out of jobs. And it's like, no, there's just going to be other jobs. Like there's, you know, they, they say, oh, well, you're going to need to learn how to, uh, somebody needs to work on those robots and somebody needs to program mm -hmm. the robots and somebody needs to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But then, then there's other industries. I, I think for the foreseeable future, at least for our, our lives, the, the human element is still going to be very real in a lot of transactions. I mean, when oh, yeah. you go to a restaurant, when you go to a McDonald's, maybe a quick service place. Yeah. You don't want to talk to somebody, but if you're going to a nice sit down restaurant, even a nice, just like a casual restaurant, you want to have that interaction. You want to have mm -hmm. somebody wait on you. So like, I mean, there are certain, certain mm -hmm. industries, certain jobs, just you can't replace humans. And I think that we've learned that over the past years that that in-person human touch to things is, is important for us as humans. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. You know, there's definitely going to be that. But uh, as far as our, our lower level jobs, and I hate to kind of say it that way, but those lower level jobs like the fast food workers, those are going to start getting replaced by robots and stuff. And yeah, working on the robots themselves, once they find a way to do it, that they'll easily replace it. I mean, that's what these a lot of these companies want to do. There's not a bunch of these big companies like First Form who is willing to say, no, we're going to have humans here. Yeah, we could automate this stuff and make it cheaper and make our profits better, but we wanted to actually give people jobs. So it also comes back to the humans actually being more human <laughs> and actually wanting to employ people, which is why we need more entrepreneurs and why we need more engineers out there becoming entrepreneurs to help build things so that people can help make them and help sell them and market them and all the things that are necessary in creating and running a business. You just said the name of the most mentioned company on our podcast, besides our own company. First <laughs> form. I think they get mentioned probably at least once every three episodes. I'm pretty sure that Julie's got some sort of secret like deal that she hasn't cut me in on <laughs> some sort of sponsorship. Uh, <laughs> I wish I just wish I could get a discount, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I want to shift gears really quick and talk a little bit about accountability, which I feel okay. like goes well with mindset and leadership. And I know that you are a big accountability guy. And I think if I remember correctly, you're doing something with a good friend of the show, Trent Bray, mm -hmm. who is from Hustle Energy. And you guys have an account. Are you doing an accountability podcast or is there something happening with accountability that you guys are doing together? Yes. Yeah. So we're doing group coaching together. So the, the engineering coaching is something I do on a one-on-one -on -one basis with engineers. And so that's my thing, but then we kind of partner together on the group accountability coaching. And so that's what we do with a weekly call on, on clubhouse. And then we're also in the works of starting up a podcast right now. And I'm going to put more fire for, for both of us is uh, May 1st is going to be the launch of that. I'm not sure when this podcast will come out but may 1st is supposed to be a launch of that joint podcast with him and i where we do talk about accountability or tactics and and uh, things of that nature and he's going to interview people and talking about getting out of the nine to five but yeah accountability is a, a huge piece when it comes to mindset but really starting a business and that's what i noticed when i first got started trying to start on the side hustle and everything is I had to be accountable to myself because if I wasn't that, first of all, things weren't happening for my business. It's not like going into a nine to five where you kind of have these tasks set up for you and you do the task and you did a great job and then you go home, you don't have to worry about it till the next day. Well, when you're doing entrepreneurship, 
you have to have those tasks in place. You have to have the things that help hold you accountable. And that's why Trent and I wanted to start that group because it's a lonely road, especially first starting out because your family, your, your close friends, a lot of times don't want to be there for you when you're trying to start out that business. They think you're crazy. You've got a great job. Why would you try and do something else? Why would you work extra hours just to not make any money at the start? And that's why Trent and I wanted to start this accountability group to give, give a place for people to help one another out, to be able to be held accountable. Because when you speak those goals out there for other people to know about, then you have to kind of actually hit them. But if you keep it to yourself, well, nobody knows that, hey, I'm writing a book or I wanted to run a marathon this year and then I didn't do it. It's like, well, nobody knew, so it's not a big deal. But if you start telling people about it, and especially in a group, <laughs> then it's like, well, what's going on, Philip? I thought you were going to go run a marathon. You haven't even ran all year. Like, you've actually gained 20 pounds. What's going on? Like, so that's the power of an accountability group. And accountability is it actually holds you to a higher standard to actually reach the goals that you said you were going to reach. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think accountability is so important. Um, I, I, I score really high on the self-accountability scale, mm. um, but it's because I'm, I'm super goal oriented, right? <laughs> so I love to set a goal and then try and like hit it. And I'm, I'm okay with setting a goal. And as long as I'm working towards it, if I don't achieve the exact goal, but I'm, you know, still making progress, then I'm like, mm -hmm. th that to me is motivating. And I'm guessing that the most recent change that has come out for Clubhouse could really benefit you guys with the, now the creators being able to get paid directly on Clubhouse. Oh, wow. I hadn't seen that update yet. 100% of the money. So like if I was in your accountability group, on Clubhouse and you could charge for that group and you they can now make payments directly on Clubhouse and you get 100, Clubhouse isn't taking any of the money. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that just came out, literally just released. Mm. Uh, I okay, also, man, I have, to, I have to look into that and get all his details and talk with Trent about that if he doesn't even know yet. <laughs> he probably doesn't. I yeah. also realized that, that Julie's getting uh, under table sponsorship payments from clubhouse as well because that's <laughs> the second most thing that we talk about on this podcast All right. not, true. not true not true well we probably need to start wrapping up philip this was such a great conversation really enjoyed it and the time just flew by um philip tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you right now we're still trying to get our website together for that group accountability coaching so best place is to reach mm -hmm. out to me on Instagram at Philip Sessions. That's with one L. That's really the best place to reach out to me. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you to our listeners for tuning in. As always, we really appreciate you. And we'll put all of Philip's information in our show notes so you can grab it from there. And you can connect with us on our social media sites. We are on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We have a YouTube channel out there. And anything that you need to know about us or if you want to connect with us on social media, you can get it all on sbpace.com. Yeah. And go ahead and subscribe to our podcast and like us and give us a review. We love feedback. And you can reach out about any topics that you want us to cover. If you want to be a guest, that form you can fill out. It's on our website again, sbpace.com. And we have a book out there. You can link, uh, get the link on our site. It's called Seriously, Now What? A Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness. It's the number one bestseller on Amazon. We have a digital workbook available to go along with the book. And if you purchase the book, please like it and give us a review. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And this was BizQuick, helping small businesses across America.